بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم. We have summation over positive integer n of minus one to the n minus one. The hyperbolic cotangent of pi n all divided by n. The hyperbolic cotangent function in the summand has this series representation. The first step is to insert the series representation in the original sum. We get a single sum n from one to infinity minus one to the n minus one over n times one over pi n. That's one over pi summation over positive integer n of minus one to the n minus one over n squared. If all the terms in this sum are positive, we get zeta of two. Because of the alternating sign, we need to subtract double the sum of the reciprocals of the even positive integers, which is one fourth times zeta of two. This sum is equal to one over two pi zeta of two, which is pi squared over six. This part is pi over twelve. When we do the substitution, we also get a double sum two over pi summation over positive integers n and m of minus one to the power n minus one divided by m squared plus n squared. Note that this n and that n go away. This summation is over the positive integer two-dimensional grid. What if we had a double sum over all integer pairs except zero zero? This is a sum over these points. Note that in these two sums, rather than having m squared plus n squared, we have m squared plus n squared to the power alpha. Alpha is a real number strictly greater than one. We later take the limit as alpha approaches one from above. How are these two sums related? We need to take this sum, subtract the sum over the points on the axes. If this is m and this is n, then we need to subtract double the sum m from one to infinity minus one at all points on the horizontal axis n is equal to zero. Downstairs we have m to the power two alpha. We also need to subtract double the sum n from one to infinity minus one to the n minus one divided by n to the two alpha. M is equal to zero at all points on the vertical axis. What we have here is the sum over all non-zero integer pairs, excluding the points on the n and m axes. If this quantity is multiplied by one fourth, we get the left hand side. The left hand side is one fourth times this double sum over the integer m n pairs, excluding the origin. We need to add one half summation over positive m of one over m to the two alpha. Then we need to subtract one half summation over positive integer n of minus one to the n minus one divided by n to the power two alpha. This sum looks like the sum we have investigated at the beginning. The difference is that we now get one half zeta of two alpha rather than one half zeta of two. If this is multiplied by minus one half, we get minus one fourth zeta of two alpha. From here, we have one half zeta of two alpha. This double sum is one fourth that double sum plus zeta of two alpha over four. When we take the limit, this is multiplied by two over pi to get zeta of two alpha over two pi. When alpha tends to one, this quantity tends to one over two pi times pi squared over six. That's pi over twelve. Pi over 12 and pi over 12, we get the sum of interest equal to pi over 6 plus 2 over pi times 1 over 4 times this double sum. We need to take the limit of this double sum, which is a function of alpha, as alpha approaches 1 from above. Let's split this double sum into even and odd terms. Here we have odd integers. Odd minus 1 is an even integer. Minus 1 to the power an even integer is 1. This is the sum when n in the original sum is odd and m is even. If n is even, this becomes minus one. This part corresponds to the case in which n is even and m is odd. That one corresponds to the case in which both m and n are even. In the fourth sum, we need to exclude the origin. The sums that we have here can be manipulated using the Jacobi theta function, but let's hunt for a more elementary approach. We need upper and lower bounds on the double sum over positive integer m and n of one over m squared plus n squared to the power alpha. Let's start with the lower bound. Consider this square. The bottom left vertex is mn. The top right vertex is m plus 1, n plus 1. Consider x between m and m plus 1, y between n and n plus 1. m squared is less than or equal to x squared. n squared is less than or equal to y squared. Sum these two inequalities, we get m squared plus n squared less than or equal to x squared plus y squared. Raise both sides to the power alpha. Then take the reciprocal to obtain that 1 over m squared plus n squared or to the power alpha is greater than or equal to 1 over x squared plus y squared to the power alpha. Integrate both sides with respect to x and y over this square. The left-hand side is not a function of x and y. When we do the integration, we get the left-hand side multiplied by the integral of 1 over this square, which is 1. On the right-hand side, we get the integral of 1 over x squared plus y squared to the alpha. x is from m to m plus 1 y is from n to n plus 1. Consider this summation here, which is over the positive integer pairs. We can sum over all points here, excluding the origin. 
Then we subtract the sum over the points on the x and y axes. From here, we get minus 2 zeta of 2 alpha. The double sum can be lower bounded using this result here. This part is greater than or equal to summation over m from 0 to infinity, n from 0 to infinity, mn not equal to 0, 0. We have a double integral over x and y. Note that the lower bound on this term is the integral over this square here. The lower bound on the term in which m is 0 and n is 1 is this area. The lower bound on the term in which m is 0 and n is 2 is this area. The lower bound on the term in which m is 1 and n is 1 is this area. The lower bound on the term in which m is 1 and n is 0 is this area, and so on and so forth. This double sum applied to this double integral is the double integral with respect to x and y of the function 1 over x squared plus y squared all to the power alpha. The region of integration is the first quadrant except this unit square here. The integral over this shaded region is the integral over the first quadrant excluding this quarter circle minus the integral over this part here. Note that the equation of this circle is x squared plus y squared equal to 1. Over the part we are interested in, the sum of the squares is greater than or equal to 1. So 1 over x squared plus y squared to the power alpha is less than or equal to 1. Multiplying both sides by minus 1, we get that minus 1 over the sum of the squares to the power alpha is superior to minus 1. So this integral here is lower bounded by minus 1 times the area of this part. And the area is 1, the area of the unit square. Then we need to subtract the area of the quarter circle with radius 1. This double integral over this region can readily be carried out using polar coordinates. dx dy is r dr phi. 1 over x squared plus y squared to the alpha is 1 over r to the power 2 alpha. r is from 1 to infinity. And the angle phi is from 0 to pi over 2. The integral with respect to phi is pi over 2. The integral with respect to r of 1 over r to the 2 alpha, r greater than 1, is 1 over 2 alpha minus 2. This double integral is pi over 4 times 1 over alpha minus 1. From here, we have minus 1 plus pi over 4. From there, we have minus 2 zeta of 2 alpha. We can combine these two terms as pi over 4 alpha over alpha minus 1 minus between brackets 1 plus 2 zeta of 2 alpha. Note that if alpha approaches 1 from above, the lower bound tends to infinity. For an upper bound, consider this square. This vertex is mn. That one is m minus 1, n minus 1. For an x, y pair on or in the interior of this square, we have x between m minus 1 and m, y between n minus 1 and n. x squared is less than or equal to m squared. y squared is less than or equal to n squared. The sum of the squares is less than or equal to the sum of the squares. Take the reciprocal and raise both sides to the power alpha. If we integrate, the left-hand side remains as is. The right-hand side becomes a double integral, x from m minus 1 to m, y from n minus 1 to n. The integrand is 1 over x squared plus y squared all to the power alpha. Note that the term in the sum corresponding to some point here, let's say this one, is upper bounded by the double integral over this square. Exclude the point mn equal to 1, 1. The other terms in the sum are upper bounded by the integral over the first quadrant, excluding this unit square. When m is 1 and n is 1, we get 1 over 2 to the power alpha. This integral is upper bounded by the integral with the region of integration that is the first quadrant, excluding the quarter unit circle here. Like on the previous page, we can do a change from rectangular coordinates to polar coordinates. The upper bound is pi over 4 times 1 over alpha minus 1 plus 1 over 2 to the power alpha. Here we have the lower and upper bounds on the double sum over positive m and positive n of 1 over m squared plus n squared to the alpha. Let's revisit our previous results. The sum of interest is pi over 6 plus 1 over 2 pi. Then we need to take the limit as alpha tends to 1 from above of this double sum. In the numerator, we have minus 1 to the n minus 1. In the denominator, we have m squared plus n squared to the alpha. Let's say that this double sum is big omega of alpha. Big omega of alpha itself can be split into four sums, covering the four possibilities of m and n being even or odd. Note that for any alpha that is strictly greater than 1, these two sums are finite. We know this from the upper bound. If in this sum we rename m as n and m as n, we get exactly that one. This difference is the difference between two equal numbers. This part is equal to zero. Let S of alpha is the double sum, but rather than having minus one to the n minus one, we just have one here. Both double sums are over the integer pairs, excluding the origin. We can write m squared plus n squared as the magnitude squared of the complex quantity n plus i m, multiply numerator and denominator by one plus i to the power two alpha. Take this one outside. Multiply n plus i m by one plus i 
we get n minus m plus i n plus m s of alpha is 1 plus i to the power 2 alpha then we have our double sum over the integer pairs excluding m n equal to 0 0 the summand is 1 over the magnitude squared of n minus m plus i n plus m note that in terms of even and odd n minus m and n plus m have the same parity which means that this double sum takes care of the terms in s of alpha where both indices are even or both indices are odd thus s of alpha divided by the magnitude of 1 plus i to the power 2 alpha is equal to this double sum and that one here we have odd integer pairs there we have even integer pairs and we must exclude the origin after eliminating this part omega of alpha is this double sum minus that double sum s of alpha over this factor is this double sum plus that double sum omega of alpha minus s of alpha over the magnitude of one plus i to the power two alpha is equal to minus two times this sum here the summand can be written as one over four m squared plus n squared all to the power alpha we can take one over four to the alpha as a common factor together with this minus two we have minus two to the power one minus two alpha this is multiplied by s of alpha itself the magnitude squared of one plus i is two the left hand side is omega of alpha minus two to the power minus alpha times s of alpha the right hand side is minus two to the power one minus two alpha times s of alpha move this to the other side the sum of interest is pi over six plus one over two pi limit as alpha tends to one from above of s of alpha multiplied by this bracket note that if alpha is equal to one this bracket is two to the minus one minus two to the power one minus two that's also minus one this bracket is zero when alpha is one the sum itself explodes to infinity as we did on the first page this double sum here can be written as one fourth of the sum over all integer pairs except the origin minus one half zeta of two alpha minus one half zeta of two alpha we get this part by excluding the points on the axes then we multiply by one over four this double sum is s of alpha over four minus zeta of two alpha so s of alpha itself can be written as four times this double sum over positive integer pairs plus four times zeta of two alpha we have lower and upper bounds on this double sum now we can write lower and upper bounds on s of alpha times this bracket the bracket is zero when alpha is one so when this bracket is multiplied by anything that is finite we get zero on both sides whether we are talking here or there the interest is by times limit as alpha tends to one from above of two to the minus alpha minus two to the one minus two alpha divided by alpha minus one the difference between the lower and upper bounds is this alpha here which tends to one we exactly have the same limit sandwiching the limit of interest the limit of this quantity as alpha tends to one from above we have a zero over zero situation applying Lobedell's rule we get one downstairs upstairs we have one half to the power alpha minus two times one fourth to the power alpha when we differentiate once with respect to alpha we get one half to the power alpha times log one half minus two one fourth to the power alpha log one fourth when alpha is one this is one half times minus log two minus two over four minus log four which is minus two log two this is log two minus one half log two which is log two over two let's not forget this pi here to get the sum of interest we multiply by log two over two by one over two pi all in all we get that the sum over positive integer n of minus one to the n minus one the hyperbolic cotangent of pi n all over n is pi over six plus log two over four